Batman, One Bad Day, Raz Al Ghul, Issue 1. This is Tom Taylor writing with Ivan Reese on the art. This is the final One Bad Day book. Mm-hmm. Uh, and honestly, the standard of quality up until this point it has been, on average, much higher than I think I expected. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, has there been any bad ones? I don't think there's been any bad ones. There's been one or two yeah, that have been with... yeah. just fine, but like, there's yeah. been no bad one. I, like... Uh, it's not like Riddler is my favourite, and Clayface shocked the hell out of me. I was Clayface is the only one I've not read. Yet. Yeah, I was uh, very surprised Clayface, by Clayface. Clayface is solid. Because that came out, obviously, this week, last month, which is where I'm yeah. up to. So I thought, it's, oh, well, I don't need to read that to read this one. It, so I'll just get for back me, to the layout. For me, it, the defining Clayface story. Like, it's that one and probably oh, that's, Tynan's that's tech. Yeah. So um, I thought it's super strong. Yeah, um, it was, it was, yeah, there hasn't been a bad one of these. There's been ones that I didn't enjoy as much, like Bane, um, but it's still not a bad read. Yeah, I think Bane and like maybe Two Face are probably like the mm-hmm. weakest ones. Yeah, I think Two Face might be. The... Yeah, yeah, maybe. Uh, well, one of those two is probably the weakest. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. and both of them are like, hey, if you if you read them, you're not gonna be mad. No, no. not at all. Uh, it's it's part of an anthology. Like if that's your low bar, <laughs> then you're you're swimming. Doing, uh, doing pretty well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and you know. This this uh, Raz Al Ghul issue, I would say slots somewhere kind of just in the middle of the whole bunch for me. It's not as good as Riddler or Clayface, but I obviously like it much more than the ones that we just mentioned that yes. were the low end. As as the resident Raz guy, right? Raz is one of my favorite villains. I I think this is a a very solid Raz story, and I would, I would probably put it up higher, but I'm biased. No, I, I, I also would put this in the the higher tier of mm-hmm. these books for me, uh, having not read the Clayface one yet, admittedly. Mm-hmm. So I thought mm. that might end up above it still. Yeah. But. Um, but but yeah, I mean, again, not shocked that Tom Taylor understands the you know, Ra's al Ghul in the way that he does, um, and and it's all the reasons why I love Ra's as a villain, especially as someone that's opposite Bruce, because uh, you know, not that they necessarily have the same goals, but they are on the same side to a certain point, um, and I like how this issue plays with that. Yeah, uh, so it kind of has this bookend where it opens with Raz kind of experiencing a rebirth. Then, like, he always mm-hmm. sort of goes back to this memory from his childhood where he was mm-hmm. saved by, like, a, a wolf or... A pack of wolves, yeah. you know, as as these, these barbarians are raiding his village as he's a child. He runs into the forest and they got him. So, yeah, this is what his mind always goes back to when he's yep. been reborn in the Lazarus pit. <clears throat> and... and- this story is effectively about Raz enacting a plan in which he wants to improve the world by taking out 27 targets who are mm-hmm. all kind of you know billionaires and adjacent type people who are responsible for things like you know oil corporations uh, mm-hmm. you know people who are high up in the list for ruining the planet <laughs> let's just say yeah. and wants to and they, sort of they wait- have some real world if if you really dig deep they have some real world uh counterparts you know that, that have been in the news recently oh so. sure we're not going to do that though no uh, but it, basically it's him going after all these characters and he has like he set things up enough that he's got people in place that are going to replace them with better ideals now they're not people who work for raz or even members mm-hmm. of the league it's just that he's kind of basically politicked his way to making sure that whoever's next in line to take over a company is, you know, the main example we get in this is this guy who owns a, you know, a fossil fuel company. His mm-hmm. daughter, like, wants to get away from that and wants to move to renewable energy and things like that. So, um, and it kind of presents this interesting conundrum where his goal, and this is often true for Raz, but here especially, it's very clear cut. His goal here is very positive. It's very commendable and what he's actually mm-hmm. trying to accomplish so when Batman still wants to sort of bring him in for the murder of multiple people, it does kind of like pre- pre- present this interesting quarry for the audience as far as your morals and ethics go, because you're like, you know, he may actually, the world may be better off, honestly, with these yeah. people gone. Like, yeah, it's, it's very much playing the uh, the eco-terrorist angle that it does with mm-hmm. with like Ivy as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Which probably why I loved it so much, right? Because yeah. it, it's the meme of, you know, he's, he might be out of line, but he's right. You know? So... Because uh, mm-hmm. at no point in this am I rooting against Ra's al Ghul. I'm like, yeah, you got to break a, a, a few eggs. To make it's, an uh, it's when he and... tells Bruce, it's like, hey, you set out to make sure that no, you know, no one has to suffer like you did, and and that's a that's a great goal. But maybe some of them he didn't need to be saved. 
Okay, well, like, and, maybe the world would have been better if some of them didn't. Well, yeah. and his whole and this and this is where he he edges towards the villainous part is where he says no life's above the future, you know. So he's willing to sacrifice Damien, right? His his own blood, his one time heir, in order well, to enact this that's plan. That's not entirely true because he doesn't admit afterwards that he like what? Bruce was right. Yeah, I wouldn't. Well, know, no, wouldn't he tells that. Damien that. Right. I don't. I, I don't. Believe uh, him. True. True. But... No, but this is what he's he's trying to to enact right is he's it, that's his that is a gamble that's his bluff right is that no life is is worth the future does that so the, that, the big thing in the book though is that he does actually kill mm-hmm. batman right when batman <laughs> sh- shows up to try and stop him uh he gets you know held down and raz stabs him and kills him and, and at no bruce, point did i was like i was like he's not gonna kill like he's not gonna stab bruce he's not that big sword they're and, they're and, doing and then a there's a sword through his chest it, well they do the whole Bruce and Roz, you know, sh- you know, famous shirtless sword fight, you know, where Bruce is in the cowl. And I was just like, oh, Bruce is going to get out of this. And then Bruce doesn't get out of this. And I was like, oh, my God, what is going on? Well, uh, that's that's the thing. It's that the whole the whole point of this is that it effectively takes Batman out of the game because it's not that hard to predict that he's probably going to get thrown in the Lazarus pit and come mm-hmm. back. Although this is not necessarily in continuity, so they could have just let him no. stay dead. Uh, it wouldn't have been out of the question. But... When he comes back at the end, towards the end of the book, and Damien's like, "Hey, like you know, it's been three months," and the whole idea is that Raz just kept him dead long enough to finish killing all the people that he wanted to kill. Literally yeah. put Batman on ice. Yes. Yeah. It, it wasn't about killing him. It wasn't about taking no. him out. It was just a let's uh, let's put you on pause for a little Which bit. Keep you out of the way. It's almost an interesting kind of admission by, and obviously Raz has always respected Batman. You know, he always calls yeah. him a de- detective and so on. <laughs> but. It's almost like an interesting thing where he's like, no, we still need him around. Like, Batman still serves a, a, a great purpose mm-hmm. in the world that is necessary, but he needs to be taken out for a while to, like, so that what needs to be done is done because he will get and in that, the way. And, and to me, that's Roz, not part of that bluff is that there's no life, you know, that's more valuable than the future, including Batman's. However, the fact that he brings him back kind of undermines that. He just needed him out. You know, to ensure the future that Roz knows that he needs, he's got to get rid of Batman. You yeah. Know? So, um, and and yeah, I just I, I like that. And when when Bruce wakes up and, and Damien just kind of just sitting there waiting, you know, I thought that was a real a real like surreal moment for the for a Batman book. Yeah, I, I enjoyed the Damien inclusion in this. You know, Bruce making him promise not to kill anyone, never to take mm-hmm. a life, which Damien does, and. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, I, it, it's just uh, the detective work of like going down to the boat where the, the rich guy was killed and mm-hmm. looking for crime, you know, the evidence in the crime scene and all that. Yeah, um, the, the, all... He, he was he was drowned in the pool, not in the ocean. You know, there was chlorine in his lungs, all that type of stuff. Yeah, it's just, there's a lot of fun little batman scenes in this. Like, you know, it's kind of interesting mm-hmm. that it starts as a Raz story and then it kind of transitions mm-hmm. to being the Batman story in the middle for a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, and those scenes are all relatively enjoyable yeah. and then it comes back around to to be in the confrontation yeah. and Raz making his big grand Birdemic style speech about how uh, there's <laughs> <Tip. laughs> how he's, he's swam through corrals that are now just, you know, dead ocean yeah. and, uh, you know, all the, you know, he, he saw these rhinos stampede and, and now there's no rhinos to stampede. Yes. yes. You know, him, I also, I also, I'm just saying him and Rod from Birdemic would get along very well. Pete, I'm not going to watch Birdemic. All right. You're not going to get me. I'm not trying to convince you to watch Birdemic. I'm just using a cultural touchstone of modern entertainment as a comparison point. A touchstone. Ay, ay, ay. Um, <laughs> also, I, I do love, and this is me speaking as a dog person, the fact that, you know, we get a, a, a you know, a peek at Roz's humanity through this relationship he has with his pet wolf. That, you know, he, that's a descendant of the type of wolves that saved him as a kid. And we, you know, I'll just admit the last here. one, almost, by the way he's talking about it. Yeah, you know, this is now an extinction, and this is what he's trying to prevent more of, you know, but, you know, the fact that Roz is the one that puts his pet wolf down, and just like, I wasn't expecting this book to make me cry, but that's Tom Taylor. It's like the uh, the doctor's like, hey, look, you know, he's in pain. We, we kind of waited for you because we figured right. you'd want to, you know, say goodbye. Yeah, uh, so when and, Batman wakes up, he goes to fight Roz, and this is where we get the shirtless uh, sword fight. Yeah. Uh, the the classic sort of fight, uh, which ends with Raz throwing himself off the mountain. Uh- <laughs> yeah, yeah, wasn't expecting that either. Like, you know, 
uh, death by the, you know. Oh, it was also here's an out, right here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This this will solve the problem until I can come back. Yeah, right. and he wakes a wakes break. up a little bit later. I think what does Talia say? Like a year, two years later, something like that. Yeah. Uh, and they're in China. They found a Lazarus pit, and this one's not surrounded by snow and ice. This one's surrounded by lush forest. You know, it's yeah. Yeah. You know, so it ends with this nice. this happy thing where he's he's got a he's got a new puppy. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's got the the sun shining. Cool. He's in the yeah. jungle. And and because he knew his plan was going to be. It's so airtight that Batman can't undo it without making things worse. Well, that that was the interesting thing to me, yeah, yeah. is that, like, so when they're fighting, they're debating this, and Raz al Ghul effectively says, if you have to tell the world how these people died, if you have to ruin the truth of that, or ruin the lie of that, I should say, mm-hmm. then that might undo everything, because all the people have been put in place, you know, it might be, be seen as corruption and all the rest of it, it might undo mm-hmm. all the good that this was going to achieve. The best you thing you can do for the world and people on the planet is to, you know, as much as you hate it, is to let the lie last and mm-hmm. let this you know, outcome last because it's actually yeah. going to do some good. And it, it boils down to the Bruce being like, hey, this kind of isn't about the world anymore. It's about, you know, you know, Damien needs to see criminals get punished for what they do. Yeah. There has to be consequences. So Batman's right. basically saying, I will not let it lie because you're still there to sort of be brought to justice, which is why he takes the out and kills himself. He's like, well, mm-hmm. if I'm dead then you don't have to ruin the lie. And sure enough, he wakes up and Talia tells him, yeah, Batman never told the world. I, I, yeah, I respect that he, you know, he kind of sticks to his guns with a, hey, no life is above this, including his own. And so my own, right? I don't know if he knows about this Lazarus pit. Because yeah. Talia's like, oh yeah, yeah, we found it. Like, they've been searching, yeah. obviously. It's taken two years. That, that implies there was no guarantee there was one that he could use. No. I mean, essentially, Roz wins. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? uh, I will say though, he probably assumes that Talia will do her best to find one. But he's obviously hoping for. Yeah. It. yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, Roz. I feel like Roz always feels like he's going to do this forever because there'll always be a Lazarus pit, right? Through through whatever. Uh, you know, do, it do might what, take a while. Do you know what this is actually kind of reminiscent of in a, in a weird way? It's a little bit uh, End of Watchmen. It's a little bit yeah? uh, Rorschach l- letting yeah. the lie stay you know, kind of thing, like, but he can't let it go, he has to tell the truth. It's obviously a, a one-to-one, but it's kind of similar in that Batman's put in this position where it's actually the, probably the good thing is to just let it go, mm-hmm. because it's better for the world. It's like, right. he, obviously he tried to stop it, but it's done now, he can't stop it. Yeah. The best thing he can do is it, nothing. make it worse, yeah. 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 Uh, so, Raz being dead at least removes the one thing he still had, that he was still kind of hinging on. So mm-hmm. he did just let let the the story go, uh, mm-hmm. but it, it, it's an interesting dilemma for to to poke towards Batman, I think, in a story. And I guess yeah. that's why Raz people tend to like Raz as a villain because he does kind of provoke challenging ideas and narratives to Batman, where it you know mm-hmm. makes him question like, you know, is it just you know it's, it's a bit more complex than just he should just kill the Joker and they wouldn't hurt any more people. It's, it's the same kind of thing that. Like okay, on a on a surface level, why people like uh, Thanos in the movies, right? Mm-hmm. Is, hey, you know, overpopulation and you know, and, and under resourced. Obviously, that 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 boiled down to a weird problem of, oh, hang on, you can do anything. Why not double the resources instead of half well, the population? Right? Thanos still has a bloodlust. Yeah, because he's nuts. <laughs> right? Yeah, just double but the that, planets. That's fine. There yeah, you go. That, that makes I would say it makes him less interesting though than right. than Raz here, where it's it's a bit more. Uh, smaller in scope. Yeah, uh, well, there's no. It's just, it's just this one planet, right? He, he he can't literally just fix everything with a snap of his fingers. So like, there's like the problem when you introduce that mechanic to something is that all of a sudden, like it so takes. There, there are better solutions. Yeah, yeah. Whereas, you, you, you... I'm not saying there's not better solutions than what what Raz is doing here, but at least he's trying something working within it, the system as opposed to just mm-hmm. well, screw this yeah he's still killing people but it's not like uh, his terrorist attacks of the past this is a bit more like surgical precise yeah yeah surgical yeah. that's the word yeah um, see, you know they're obviously uh extra innocent casualties like when mm-hmm. blows up the building it's like well hang yeah. on like, like three thousand people died there to kill i think it was 11 but it's right. like hey gotta make sure that it looked you know plausible yeah. and, and not mm-hmm. just yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. These people were targeted and it's it, and that, it's, it's when you, it, they just throw in little statements like that where you're like, okay, you can't blame Batman. At, at no point can you actually look at Batman and go, oh, you're in the wrong for trying to like, bring him to justice because he did just murder, you know, even if you consider the one person he meant to kill as like a, a right. viable kill, that's still 2,999 people yeah. <laughs> that just died for, you know, 
Like not not for nothing, but yeah, yeah. People who didn't need to die. Yeah. So, um, so there is still that slight kind of yeah. evil tinge to it. At no point yeah. is he like, despite rooting for him, he's never not the villain. Yeah. You know. So, uh, but yeah, it's it's definitely the Tom Taylor bringing like context and layers. I, yeah, I, I do think it's things. interesting that Tom Taylor's interpretation of the because basically all this was as a thesis was. Your story's called One Bad Day and then a villain's title. And we've seen how all these different writers have interpreted that. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, is it a bad day for Batman? Is it a bad day for the villain? You know, what right. is it? I like how he interpreted it as the villain wins. So it's a bad day for Batman, but it's actually quite mm-hmm. a good day for Ra's al Ghul at the end of the story. But, but, right. But the, there's obviously, the, you have elements of the, the bad day for Raz in his kind of origin parts of this issue. Oh, sure, yeah. Uh, like sure. That's, that's in there. Which, it, makes him, yeah. it makes him kind of hypocritical, though. Because at one point in this story, he, he criticizes Batman and he says, you know, all you're trying to do, all you've ever been trying to do is try to stop two bullets that were fired, you know, 30 years ago or whatever. Mm-hmm. But technically, all he's really trying to do is, like, put the world back to the way it was when he was attacked by a wolf and he's, he's passed, you know? He's, he's still trying to bring the world back to its, you know, glory of that, that time period. So even he's still kind of ruled by this memory of oh. when he was a child. <laughs> Is it in that time period, or is it motivated by a fact that he's trying to just make it to where there, there's, you know, not yeah. just that time period, but it's more pure. It's less, I, I, less yeah, of, of poisoned. Because you know? I don't get the impression that he had that goal immediately, in the same way that you, you often see with, with with Bruce, or pretty quickly with Bruce. Oh sure, uh, no, all, all Raz, it's, it's over. All, over all... centuries, he sees the you know mm-hmm. the world kind of get destroyed. He's like, nah, screw this. All I'm comparing it to is this idea that he's haunted. Like he keeps uh, this memory yeah. keeps coming back yeah. to him every time he's it's, waking up. The same just, way that Bruce has always seen the perils fall to the core ground. Memory, and and then you know at the end there, now that he won, that's not the memory anymore. Is he's he's actually reborn, right? And that's. That's also the wolf puppy, right? Mm-hmm. Is you know his mission is now different. It is reborn, you know. So, but yeah, and so again, leave it, leave it to Tom Taylor to add new layers and context to this established, you know, everything we thought we knew about Roz, right? He's added to him. Yeah. So. No, I mean I enjoyed it when I said I put it in the middle. Mm-hmm. I just meant it didn't, it didn't, it doesn't take down my yeah. my top two, I, which 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 for me are easily Riddler right. than Clayface. Yeah. This this is up there with those with with me, but again, I'm biased. I love Roz in the way that I love Ivy. Is that any other circumstances they could be seen as a hero, right? But there's just that little twist to them that makes them the villain. And now, yeah. now in terms of of with Ivy, she's she's a straight anti-hero, just like uh, Harley is now. You know, whereas Roz still has that edge, and Two Face still has that edge because he's another one that I throw in there that, you know, he you know Harvey Dent was a hero. So I um, think Poison Ivy, like Harley, I think there's an argument that she's shifted over the years just because of popularity. I think Ivy's a little bit different in that when she was created, the idea of someone like being crazy about like the world and wanting to mm-hmm. protect it felt more just kind of wild. Whereas the more times went on and the more climate change is more of an accepted thing, mm-hmm. the less the harder it is to just look at her and go, villain. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's what and that's what G uh, that's what uh, Wilson is getting into, yeah. right? And in, in that book is why is she a villain? Like, you know, and she tries to be the big bad in that book, and she just ends up saving people because that's her ultimate yeah. her mission, and right? So it's kind of the same thing that has happened with with Raz as well. Like, especially mm-hmm. the more we see him take the kind of the ecological angle now. Mm-hmm. Um, like, if, if you could buy even to other like the Nolan movies, it was yeah. less ecological and more just humanity should be better. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, that one he, he is much more common with Thanos, right? That he's willing to destroy things to rebuild, you know. Yes. So he wants um, he wants the he, want, he, he, he wants to be God in that one. Essentially, he wants yeah, the flood, he, wants, he, he wants the flood and then right, start the over. flood and the fire and all that stuff. Yeah. 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 So, but yeah. This, this is a lot more relatable. Even if you agree with his ideals, like the core idea of we can be better in in yeah. like, you know in that take of Raz, uh, his methods are clearly way too extreme. Mm-hmm. Whereas this here, it's it's a lot smaller of a sacrifice that he is making out of the population compared to those like entire cities, you know. Right. Well, because but, it, like like Pete said, it's surgical. It's yeah. I I don't mind him taking out the you know CEO of a major polluter, you know that that paid to cover things up, you, you know they yeah. they 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 made their choice. Ross made his choice and he he won. You know he came out on top. 
So that that whole scene on the yacht also very very well done with the ninjas and mm. you know the league showing up. But and also I I feel like Ivan uh, Reese here you know has that kind of style where there's a gloss to it that I feel fits this kind of story. Um, it's you know. the really heavy inks as well that mm-hmm. really work, I think, for, for for Raz especially. And like, you know, when you see him like wearing his cape and like, you know, it, yeah. it really swells out. Well, yeah. And all the, the, the shirtless sword fight too, that's so iconic. And with yeah. the with Reese's style here, it was it was good. Yeah, no, I again I expected to like this because of the creative team. I didn't expect it to go as hard as it did. Uh mm. and again, elicit actual emotions out of me seeing, you know, Roz have the side of humanity that you don't see. Like this is a guy that goes out of his way to kill family members just to resurrect them to get his way. And yet him, him being completely devastated by the loss of his dear pet, I wasn't expecting to read in a, in a comic this week. So. Yeah. All right. Matt, what are you giving one bad day? Raz al Ghul? I'm going to give us an eight. I feel like you were way more passionate I, about yeah, this I, one. I was going to say like, you, yeah, you, yeah. I, I'm shocked. All right, fine. I'll give it a nine. But that's not how this works, Matt. Yeah. That's how this works. I just did it. Connor, what are you giving? The book? Yeah, that, that threw me off because I was going to give it an eight point five, and I was like, "Like, yeah. sure, Matt was going to be higher than me because Matt's always higher than me." Yeah. And I'm like, like, what, what, what just happened? I don't know. I don't have an answer for you. <laughs> Rate it. <laughs> you did. I did. Yeah, eight point five. Oh, I thought you were still going to give a final rate because it sounded like you were going to maybe alter no, it no. based on what he said. No, no, no. I'm I'm not mad. I don't alter it based on that. I know. Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to go with straight eight. Uh, I liked it. It was good. They study it, Raz. You and... liked it the exact same amount of Matt, apparently. <laughs> apparently. I'll give it a nine. I don't know what you guys talking about. Apparently so. <laughs>